Recently I've seen a threefold increase in views and watch time for my Shinobue introduction videos. I mean, obviously when I say big, the absolute numbers are still small, but it's nevertheless pretty cool. If you think Shinobue is cool, that is, of course. It is quite clear that the increase in interest is caused by the release of the game Xenoblade Chronicles 3. It not only correlates with the release of the game, but it is also clear from the comments that many people are now wanting to start playing Shinobue. The soundtrack for the game features some specifically made Shinobue, which quite obviously is a source of inspiration for a number of players of the game. I personally have not played it, it's much too violent for my taste, but to each his or her own. <laughs> so to help everybody along in playing Shinobue, here is the next installment of my Shinobue introduction series, where I will be talking about a riveting topic, Shakua Shinobue notation. Basically, there are two systems for notating Shinobue music, the traditional Japanese way and Western staff notation. The main difference between the two systems is that in the traditional way, what is notated is the fingering of notes, just as in traditional shakuhachi notation, whereas staff notation is based on the pitches of notes. The rhythm notation in both systems is actually very similar. It is also very common to have the western notation supplemented by the traditional way, so if you like this is a third hybrid system. Or you can see this as using western notation with annotations for fingerings, which is also commonly done for many instruments. Also note that not all shinobue are tuned to a western scale. Only the uta flutes are. The hayashi, the festival flutes, are not tuned to any scale in particular, so each flute produces different pitches. So for hayashi flutes it does not make a lot of sense to use western staff notation in the first place, but the traditional Japanese system works just fine. I talk a bit more about the different types of shinobue in the video up Somewhere here. <laughs> um, if you want to learn Western staff notation, there are plenty of resources in languages other than Japanese on the internet, so I will focus here on the traditional Japanese Shinobue notation. But before we continue, this is the point in the video where I need to advertise myself. Subscribe, like, ring the bell, all that stuff. However, I'm really bad at that, so I'll let one of the YouTube greats speak for me instead. Slap like now, within three seconds. OMG. As already said, for Shinobu the traditional system uses numbers to indicate the fingering. The number basically stands for the number of open holes. We're obviously not counting the blowing hole and the bottom hole. There are a few exceptions of course, but let's start with the basics. The Shinobu has seven finger holes, so the numbers run from zero to seven. So starting with two for example, the bottom two holes are open and we get this pitch here. Then for three, we open the next hole. So the bottom three holes are open. Then for four, this here changes. The bottom hole is closed. This is not counted, however, and it doesn't affect the pitch. Okay. Then we go up four, five, six, and seven. All the holes are open. Also note that we write in the traditional Japanese direction, so from top right to bottom left. Um, I'm planning to have the notations over here, so I hope this all works in post. All right, when we get to one and zero, the fingerings are slightly different. For one, the top hole, this one here, is also opened for two reasons. On most flute, this is necessary to get the correct pitch, and it makes the tone color cleaner, so that it is more in line with the other notes. Maybe you can hear the difference in tone color when I close the top hole. For zero, all the holes are closed, as you would expect from this number, except for the second hole from the top. There are three octaves on the Shinobue, and depending on the octave, different symbols are being used. The lower octave, Ryo, uses kanji. The second octave, Kan, uses Arabic numerals. And the third octave, daikan, uses Arabic numerals with a dot on top. One thing to note is that the fingerings in the third octave, so in daikan, are quite a bit different than in the other two octaves. What is one in the first two octaves, so is eight in daikan, and the fingering for that is this one here. 
After that you have two to five, but again the fingerings are quite different. Plus you oh, need some ear protections for the really high notes. Wow, this is painful. Right, okay, uh, but please refer to a fingering chart for the details on the daikan. As you can see, this traditional Japanese notation makes it difficult to use the same notation for playing on a different instrument because it will have different holes and different fingerings. And also, if you stay on the same shinobue, it is awkward to transpose the music to a different key signature. Except, that is, if you transpose the Japanese style. That means by changing to a flute with a different length, so to a flute that has a different bass pitch. This makes transpositions even easier. All fingerings stay the same, you just use a different instrument. So playing the start of Sakura Sakura, for example. This is just two, two, three. If I play this on a flute with a bass pitch one tone lower, the fingering is exactly the same, but the whole melody is one tone lower. So fingerings are quite straightforward. Now let's move on to the rhythm. I already mentioned that the rhythm notation is very similar to the one in Western staff notation. If you just see a number and nothing else, this is a quarter note, so a note that is played for the duration of one beat. So if we take this example here, this beat starts with a sequence of quarter notes. If a number is followed by the same number, the note is repeated by using an atari. I talk about repeats in this video up here <laughs> somewhere, so I will not go into it here. To indicate that a note is two beats long, a diagonal line after the number is written. Please take care, in this system it is easy to forget the first beat, which is indicated by the number that stands before the line. So basically you read this as the number having beat one and then the diagonal line representing beat two. For example, in this little exercise here, all the notes are two beats long. I'll indicate a beat by moving to the right or left. Next we have eighth notes. These are half as long or twice as fast as quarter notes. This means there are two notes per beat. They are written with a vertical bar on the right of the notes. So in this example here, we have a quarter note followed by two eighth notes followed by a half note. Next we have dotted notes. If you're new to music notation, this may be a bit tricky for now. Don't worry, it'll get easy again after this. Dotted notes are three quarters of a beat long. They are written with a diagonal line together with a vertical line next to the following note. So, as in this example here. Longer notes, three beats, four beats, etc., are indicated by lines following the number. First, a horizontal line followed by a vertical line, followed by a horizontal line, etc. Again, please take care, it is easy to forget the first beat, which is indicated by the number that comes before these lines. In this example here, we have the fingerings two and three, and three is four beats long. One beat for the number, and then a horizontal line, vertical line, horizontal line. Then we have five, six, again, the six is four beats long. After that, we have eight, seven, and then we have a horizontal line, and a vertical line, so this means seven is three beats long for the number, and then for the horizontal line, and for the vertical line. So if I quickly play this example. It is also easy to confuse these lines with just a straight vertical line, which simply means hold the note without counting a specific number of beats. So it's basically like a fermata in staff notation. So those are the two main elements of Shinobue notation, rhythm and the fingerings. A more advanced aspect are meri and kari. Meri and kari are techniques to change the pitch of a note by either slightly changing the position of the flute or by half holding. So, 
That would be the first technique where I change the position and then we have half holding. The first technique is used to slightly alter the pitch, for example, to compensate for idiosyncrasy of an instrument. Half holding is used to play half notes, more precisely the five half notes that together with the other seven notes that we already had make up a full chromatic scale. And again back to the root note. Mary is indicated with a small katakana me, short for Mary, next to the symbol. It often looks like a small x, but it is really a katakana me. Kari is written with the katakana ka, short for kari. So with this basic understanding of the traditional notation, let's now have a quick look at the hybrid of staff and traditional. Basically, the traditional notation is just written above or below the staffs, going from left to right instead of top to bottom. So if you're used to the traditional notation, it takes a bit of getting used to, but it's very straightforward. So for example, if you look at this piece here, you can see that below the staff there are the notes in kanji. So that means we play in the first octave and it starts with four, five, 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 and then five to eight notes, five, six, five, two. Towards the end of the line, we have a six with a diagonal line following it. So this means the six is held for two beats and so on. As always, I hope you found my tips useful. If you would like to support me in making these videos, you can now join my Patreon campaign, which I'm just launching this month. Great news, right? Or you can just watch another video to continue your path to Shinobu mastery. I suggest you watch this one next. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. If I play this on a flute that is one tone lower, if, if, if I play, if I play this on the flute...